Pops. Here we go. You guys ready? Yeah. All right. Yep. Okay. Welcome to Inside the 18. I'm Michael Majid, live in my bunker in Palm Desert, California. With me in another bunker in Arcadia, California, is Omar Zini, Pro GK Academy, Instagram sensation. You guys know who he is. <laughs> but joining us are two legitimate celebrities right now. We got Fulham's Damian <laughs> Laws and the big C himself, Leicester City's Chituro Odunze. Yeah. What's up, guys? Hey, guys. How are you guys? Oh, man, this is uh, this this is the dream when you when you were thinking about what you wanted to be doing right now uh, on a lovely April afternoon, you thought, oh, I want to talk to an Instagram influencer and some jackass <laughs> that's staying in his dad's uh, guest bedroom. Right? <laughs> yeah, man. This, the, this is uh, this is gonna be fun, though, guys. This is gonna be, be this is gonna be amazing, man. I mean, I'll, yeah. honestly, I'm really stoked to have you both both you guys on, obviously, because, uh, you know, both Omar and I, we we've been watching, you know, all the footage. We watched all the, the different national team matches. We've seen you guys at you know, Jen Adidas cup and all that sort of stuff when you guys were uh, in MLS and uh, both of you guys have just really bright futures. So uh, we're really stoked thank about you. this. So let's, yeah, so let's you. just, thank you very much. No, dude, you know what? You don't have to thank us, you know, thank yourselves for having that God given ability that I wish I had. Uh, Omar has a little bit of that. He was LA, you know, <laughs> LA galaxy Academy. You know? I know, but I never was able to go anywhere else after that. I think the next, I think I went to, I went to a, a trial in Mexico. It was uh, with Decos, uh, Liga MX team. And I, right from the start, we had a line of keepers. The goalkeeper would take, uh, the coach would shoot a ball at your hands. And to start the drill, you had to do a side volley to get it out to the winger. And then that winger would bring it down the line and cross it in. And that's how the drill like, worked pretty much. And I couldn't figure out how to do a side volley. It was 15 and no one knew how to do it in the, in the state. So I was trying to do a drop kick and I was trying to do all this stuff. And, Needless to say, the coach pulled me aside and said, look, that's like the bare minimum of what we need from somebody. So sorry, we're not going to take you. The bare wow. minimum is Dude, his side I'm, volley. I'm telling you, man, like they were they were far and like above way ahead of everybody when it came to that trend. And yeah, it was such a weird, weird time for me because I didn't know what to expect. I'm like, well, my coach in L.A. is telling me to do a, a half volley. So I don't know what this side volley is. And yeah. Did you, your coach in L.A. Your coach in L.A. was crazy old school, though, right? Like a military guy. <laughs> he was, yeah, he was. And he always, you know, made that that comparison of how many Hispanic goalkeepers have you seen in the Premier League and how many Americans have you seen in the Premier League? You tell me which one is the better way. So he always had his way of letting me know that my my Liga MX style or my Mexican style was not the right way. So dude, dude, that you're uh, you're making him sound like some he, he, he should have a red hat on or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure these guys have probably run into some coaches out there who have, uh, you know, tried to change their way. So, again, this is not about me, Mike, or you. Let's get to these guys. No, let's just get, get, get to it, guys. Uh, f first off, uh, guys, we actually have a question from one of the insiders right here, uh, and it's for, to both of you guys here, and it's at Owen. Dude, I totally butcher names. Uh, so let's Owen, see how this Owen works. Owen Cornell won. You got, oh, you got it. I know him, yeah. You know, I know him. Oh, you know him. Okay, okay. Yeah. But he says, how did you guys get in contact with teams overseas and how was the trialing phase for both you guys? So you can go first if you want. All right. Mike, yeah. Mike, quick question, so, quick question for you guys. Can we get a little background of you guys real quick, like where you guys started, just so that, like for context for the viewers and where you guys are now? All right. Um, so I'm from all over the place, actually, to be honest. Um, <laughs> so, of course, born in uh, North Carolina, uh, grew up in South London. Uh, spent uh, a couple years at Chelsea's Academy um, from under nines to under 12s and then moved to Calgary, Canada, where I played uh, for the Foothills and moved to Vancouver, where I was playing until uh, August when I moved to Leicester. Wow. Yeah. Amy, it's like, I'm from Chicago. I don't know what else to tell you. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm from Chicago. I uh, played for a little a small Polish team when I was younger, about eight, nine. And then once I turned, you know, around nine, ten years old, I played for the Magic for a couple of years. And then uh, when I was 14, I started playing with the Fire. And then I recently left the Fire August. Yeah, in August. After, yeah, after the playoffs, after the playoffs of around July, August, and then I joined Fulham. So it's been seven, eight months now, Fulham. Yeah, you, got yeah. out, you got out at the right time, dude. Yeah. <laughs> the academy's uh, has done. Dude, yeah, dude, was, dude uh, that, that's, that's, a, that's a crazy thing, dude, with the D, yeah. whole DA thing. I bet you guys never thought that was going to happen. No. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, this is good times, though. This is good times. Helped me a lot. 
Yeah, it was, it was good. It was amazing. I'm Very sure. Good. It was amazing. Dude, I'm sure. So, so actually, so getting back to that kind of that question for Owen, because uh, obviously Omar knows him, so he's going to want to make sure that his, his question gets answered right there. Um, <laughs> let's obviously in regards to the getting in contact with teams overseas. I mean, you guys were kind of you know on the U17 national team, and so you guys were kind of in that whole radar of a lot of teams. So I'm guessing like friendlies yeah. and and all that was how you guys kind of got scouted, right? Yeah. 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 Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, it's also. See, it was also like internationally, like when we went to play in England and stuff, um, England, exactly. different countries. Yeah, we were scouted there as well. Yeah. 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 And then the whole trialing process to me was that um, Leicester and uh, Whitecaps got in contact and they arranged like a two week, a two week uh, training period, which I went over, which was um, the main time they got to see me. Yeah. Jeez, how was that how was that feeling though for both of you guys i mean getting that call and kind of getting you know a little more pep in your step you know now you know you know, now you have an idea of like you know who's watching and uh there's just not more pressure but it's a lot to take in at such a young age i'm sure yeah. well to, to be honest it just you get excited you like you thrive over that type of stuff so yeah yeah i think it just if anything it motivates you more to be fair yeah. just keep working and seeing that people appreciate what you've been doing, you know, at such a, at such a young age. So it just kind of motivates you to, you know, keep working harder. So, yeah. So, yeah. so speak, speaking of that working harder, I, I kind of want to kind of get in today's topic. So basically the thing is, guys, is like you guys do so many different interviews, like Q&A. People are always asking you guys all these same kind of questions over and over again. And, and we definitely have a lot of fans asking questions and stuff. But, you know, we kind of we've always thought about this whole idea about like the transition from a youth to a professional goalkeeper, you know, and, and it's sometimes for, you know, old men like ourselves, like to talk about it <laughs> is one thing, but like people who are like straight up living it and like, are just going through it right now. Like I figured like a lot of like the kids out there who are listening are going to like, want to hear more from like your standpoint. And like, we're going to have a discussion about it. So I kind of wanted to start off with like everybody here, like kind of like, what do you think like is the difference between like a youth goalkeeper and like a professional, like, and whoever wants to open it up, man, feel free. Damon, you want that one? It's a good question. I mean, I think the difference is pretty much just the professionalism on and off the pitch. You know, I mean, once I moved to England, I knew that everything had to be spot on, you know, every day on and off the field. So it's pretty much, not only from, you know, on the field training hard or trying to like work as hard as I can to, you know, show or prove, show and prove the players and coaches that I'm the best player there, the best keeper there. And mm -hmm. I deserve my spot, but also off the field, you know, you exactly, know yeah. with your, with your education, with your sleep, with your diet, with everything you do off the field is just as important as on the field. Yeah. I've always thought that um, being a professional is like a mindset. So it's once you really go from, just playing on the side to like fully committing to actually wanting to play. You know? Yeah. Dude, you know, it's really cool. Damien, you, you brought up the thing, you know, before we were uh, on the air and you were saying like, Hey, you know, a lot of people say, Oh man, you're living in the dream and stuff like that. And you go, Hey man, you know, it's, it's not what a lot of you guys think it is and stuff like that. And Omar gets questions all the time from people, you know, saying, Oh man, like I can't wait to go play pro. And, and they think of it like it's Disneyland or something like that. Right. Yeah. Omar. Yeah, no, they do. I think that's the the common misconception is that these guys, you know, are sacrificing a lot. And anything in terms of conversations that I've had with people, it's like you're not getting the same experiences of being home with your family for prom or being home with your family for, you know, when you turn 21 and you know your friends are, you know, living their life here and, and going to school and doing their stuff while you're kind of doing it. It's kind of a lonely journey in a sense. I think uh, a lot of times you see the finished product, but again, I'm sure you guys can attest to this. There's a lot of lonely days, a lot of days where you're trying to fill the, the hours in your day with hobbies or trying to figure out ways to keep yourself busy. Um, so yeah, I think that's the common misconception is that it's, you know, you get the pro contract and that's kind of where the, where the, uh, the road just kind of ends. It's more like, get, that's where it just starts. There's a lot of things you got to do in terms of your own personal accountability of, of trying to develop yourself and, um, kind of withstand the adversity that you guys face on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. No, yeah, I agree you, with that. No, uh, you know, in, in regards to that, I mean, personally, I know for me, the language thing, you guys are lucky. The language thing is not as, not as big an issue for you. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> see, see how many languages do you speak? Like nine or something like that. So like how, uh, <laughs> I just speak the one. I just, just speak, speak the, the one. one. Every country I've gone to is in English speaking. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> that that is that is kind of crazy though. I bet you people were always asking you. They're like, "Hey, man." They're like, "Wait, you can play for this country, and you can play for this country, and you can play for this country." They're like, "Dude, man, you just you you've got it all, man. You you got you got your choice here, dude." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do get it quite a bit. I do get it yeah. quite a bit. People always tease me for having too many passports. So was that was that tough for you though to 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 choose U.S. And you, you got you and you can't say that it was come on you got to say you got to say it was it was a simple well, choice right really simple choice right it really wasn't it really wasn't <laughs> no i mean uh i mean i don't damien do you have any other other countries you could play for uh yeah poland i could play for poland as well okay oh that's how that's why you started out that, that polish team when you were younger huh yeah yeah so Mark, right, yeah. good job man you're, you're you're connecting the dots <laughs> dude hey i'm slow okay i'm not as i'm not as, i'm not as quick-witted i couldn't figure out owen cornell one for a for a handle right there you know so so, so let's let's talk about this guys um like come what are some of the kind of the mo- common misconceptions that youth co- goalkeepers have about signing with a professional club i think a lot of times you know goalkeepers think that like that means like oh sweet i'm going to be training you know with the first team you know the first day i get there and and you guys know that's not the case at all right no, yeah, no, that's the complete opposite. Thing. Well, can you yeah, guys take us to take us take us through your first week? I think that's the kind of where we can kind of get get kick started from there, Mike. I think just you know your first week, you guys fly to your respective uh, teams, and how does that first week look like? Do I remember my first week very well. Um, See, do you got this one, or should I start it off? Yeah, you can you can tackle this one. I'm still trying I mean, to remember. The uh, first week was pretty much just getting used to everything like they're just pushing you seeing and i'm just trying to get to know all the coaches the players just first of all adapting to you know the time because you're a bit you know it was uh, something jet just, lagged. yeah jet lagged a bit jet lagged <laughs> you know those those first three four days you're just jet lagged you wake up random times two three in the morning for no reason at all and you have to wake up at 7 a.m so i mean those were the kind of first week for me and just, I don't know, just trying to prove yourself, kind of, you know, like prove the reason why you're there. Just prove like you're a good goalkeeper, a good person on and off the field also. So, yeah, it was good. It was a good assessment, kind of assessing, you know, the players, how they play, you know, the coaches, how the coaches are, how, how the goalkeeper trainings are, how the goalkeepers are. Yeah, yeah. Seeing their weaknesses, their strengths, kind of just assessing everything that first week and then just trying to build from that for the season. For sure. Dude. Yeah. See anything you want to add to that? Yeah, mine was it's actually quite similar, but um see we got both got to England probably midway through preseason or probably towards the end of it. So yeah. like so some people have already established connections. So you, you're going in there, you have to like you've got new teammates, you've got new coaches, you've got like everything's really new. So you're trying to get adjusted while they're really trying to see what you've got. They're putting you with like different teams just to like just to measure you out. So yeah. And he's right about the jet lag. The jet lag hmm. that's a tough right, one. That was crazy. Tough that, was, one, yeah. so, that was tough. And it's gotta be tough for C because like he shows up and they're like, Oh dude, you're like thirty seven, right? So you're like <laughs> you should be like on the first team right now. Is that, is that what's going yeah. on? <laughs> yeah. I mean, dude, it's crazy still how how young you guys are because I feel like you guys have kind of been in 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 the spotlight for a while now, and I think a lot of that is because that U seventeen group, you know, was so dominant at, at, at a lot of the um, a lot of the friendlies and and a lot of the uh, the qualifying and everything. So you know, a lot of Americans really got to get to know you guys. You know, um, one thing that I really like about watching both of you guys is that you guys you can both very technically sound, very different goalkeepers, very technically sound, and you guys really work at your craft. I mean, see. Dude, the growth, literally the growth that you had from when you were like uh, 12 to like now, I mean, is, is, is oh, insane, dude. I mean, you, you probably, I remember I, I talked to somebody who, who saw you when you were younger and he said, he's like, dude, he's like, you can't even rec- recognize the goalkeeper. It's like a completely different guy. Yeah. yeah, like I remember especially like first moving to Canada and I was around, I was like maybe 12, six foot, like, a bit stocky, like it was. Well, yeah, six foot. I was just. Oh, yeah, it was. It was. I don't know. Wait, you were like, six I, foot at twelve? Yeah, I was six foot at twelve. Like, that's crazy. Omar, were you, oh, wait, Omar, were you six foot at twelve? I was like six feet at like thirteen, I think. Yeah. Oh man, I hate you, <laughs> I hate you guys. Well, I stopped. Yeah. <laughs> My, yeah. I think I got shorter after that time. I think I'm, I'm at like five eleven and three quarters now, so I may have gotten shorter. <laughs> yeah. 
No, but I mean, uh, look, I mean, one of the tough things, obviously, you know, for, for a lot of us and, and, and I, I made this the same decision as you guys is like, I, I decided to, I went to college for a second, um, literally a second. And then, um, and then I decided that I was going to try to go overseas and try to play, uh, soccer and people look at me and they go, yeah, that was a terrible decision based on what we're seeing right in front of us right now. But, uh, but I, I, I tried to do that. And a lot of people, you know, they have the misconception because I know Damien, I know college was obviously something that you were thinking about as well too. Yeah. Um, they have the misconception that, okay, if you go to college, then that means that you're never going to be a professional. But I know there's a lot of kids out there listening that like, Hey man, you know, college might be the best route for you. And it's all about like, you were talking about that mindset for both you guys, right? Like if you carry yourself as a professional in a college environment, you're still going to, you still have that pro oh, pro yeah. mentality, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Um, I exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. Like the whole mindset in the off season, it's like mainly college goalkeepers that I'm training with. Like um, in Canada, like I I know so many that have the same mentality as I do, or even like even uh, even better mentality. These guys, they're all we're all working for the same thing, so I wouldn't um, rate them any less. Yeah. No. Um, was it? Was I, it? Uh, sorry. Mike. Was, was, no. Was go it, ahead. Was it tough for you guys to like bypass college? Like, did it ever cross your mind that that was something that you wanted to uh, to do, and then that was an opportunity that you couldn't, you know, uh, necessarily see, pass up? See, I come from a family, like a very uh, academic family. Got two siblings, two older siblings in medical school. Wow. Mom's a doctor, dad's a doctor. Like, dad's a, owns a clinic. I mean, and school was probably the first thing in their minds for me. So. It was a big decision to go the, the professional route instead. So, but what was yeah. that conversation like? What was that conversation like with your parents? To be honest, they were like really welcome into the idea. See, um, I graduated early. I graduated last year. And um, so this would have been my first year. Uh, and I, we just sat down and we talked about it and like what we wanted to do. And like, it was a good conversation. And my parents said, if this is what you want to do, then completely take it and do it you know and that's what i've done that's awesome. i mean that that's awesome yeah. that they were supportive about that because uh yeah, yeah let's just say my family wasn't as supportive when i said that my two choices in life were either uh become a professional goalkeeper for real madrid or be a movie star they're like you know what <laughs> i don't know about those two choices for you i think uh <laughs> you might might want to have some more uh more realistic goals for your five eight body but you know uh, Damon, how about you <laughs> I mean, for my parents, it's kind of, I don't know, for my mom mostly, it was kind of my mom that was kind of pushing me to go to college because I would have been a first generation, you know, person from our, from my family to go to college. So it would have been, it was nice, it would have been nice for my parents. But I think as I started to get older and I, I think my parents realized that soccer is getting more, more serious for me and they see that I have a lot of passion for it. And, you know, I think they accepted it except the fact that, you know, I want to, you know, pursue playing overseas and playing professionally and they're all for it and they're supporting me. And now, now I'm trying to maintain that education and I'm doing online schooling now for, um, you know, for my school here in Chicago and also back at Fulham. So it's good. I always have that plan B, so it's good. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, here's a question from, uh, from Daniel Smith um, and he's, he's chiming in right now and he wants to ask in regards to, the developmental focus, like the difference is kind of like between your guys' goalkeeper training when you were, you know, being youth here in the United States, um, you know, in the MLS academies and, and now going overseas uh, to, to, you know, to the, to the academies over there. Um, is there a different emphasis? Have you guys noticed the training is different? What have you kind of noticed at, at the beginning was a little bit of a culture shock for you guys from a goalkeeping standpoint? Damien, do you want to go first? Right. Yeah, I mean, with my time at Fire, I had, you know, two really good goalkeeping coaches, um, Igor, Igor Dimov and Marek Walsh. So both of them helped me, you know, develop my fundamental and technique really well. And I'm very happy for what they've, you know, helped me develop. And I think at, during my time in Fulham, it was kind of, it was a, yeah, like, it was, like you said, it was a culture shock. It was kind of, you know, different training sessions, more like handling crosses, kind of distribution, side volleys. It was just a lot different. It wasn't, you know, the usual, you know, low shots, dive, kind of more kind of handling crosses for me, volleys. Just a different kind of, you know, training session that I kind of had to adapt to. And 
I mean, it's helped improve my game um, a lot, but sometimes it's also good for me to, you know, work on my pushing off my right or left foot, diving low, you know, high shots, kind of more of those fundament fundamental, um, you know, sessions. But, I mean, overall, I'm kind of pleased with uh, the training sessions in England. Yeah. yeah. See, what about um, you? Yeah, uh, I had two goalkeeper coaches mainly in Canada as well. I had Reagan Hall at Whitecaps and Jordan Santiago in um, uh, Calgary. And the main um, focus that I had really was like just getting the fundamentals, getting into my body and like the technical, the technical stuff. Like, so these are the really specifics. And that's, I think, what I probably needed the most at the time. So being at MLS Academy and getting that was perfect for me to get me ready for um to making the move now that i am here in england um i feel like the focus has changed to more of like efficiency in the goal and like just in general like being in the goal and like like making saves like making your job easier for you like yeah. all the like i would say less technical aspects and just overall goalkeeping you know yeah like having more of a presence in goal in your area in the 18 yard box that's pretty much yeah yeah, yeah like as far as it took more like like a like a thinking mentality of like problem yeah. solving that sort of that sort yeah. of thing yeah. yeah that seems to be like a really popular topic in fact omar um was discussing that uh yesterday with the with the goalkeeper coach on um on a different uh discussion and uh, by the way i'm wondering how many of these goalkeeper coaches over there just go you know what we're just going to watch omar's pro gk academy training drills and we're just going to do those uh, for you guys, I've, I've learned. I've learned honestly. I've learned so much from some of these coaches, and we even did one yesterday, Mike, where like gamification and you know, just you know, switching up the sessions to try and promote more uh, just technical, just like more more things to come out naturally versus you know like uh, uh, trying to force technique or stopping the session to uh, to to teach something versus letting them kind of teach themselves, they, you know, letting them find their own solutions. And I'm sure, kind of listening to both of you guys, I think that's kind of uh, something that's been going on in England as well is the coaches probably help you guys, you know, to a certain extent, but at a certain point, it's kind of like, you know, fight or flight where you kind of have to, uh, like you said, think for yourself, become of a, like Mike, we talk about yeah. preventative, pre preventative, preventative goalkeeping. Can you say it, Omar? Say it. I get it out. Preventative goalkeeping where you're there essentially, you like you said, Mike, problem solving, and you're trying to uh, thwart out the next, uh, the next threat before it even happens. And you're, you know, you're just readjusting your positioning inside the box, outside the box and uh, working on your zonal defense and all that stuff. So I'm sure that is, has that been something that's been difficult for you guys at the beginning or is it just kind of easy and se uh, seamless? No, it's, it was definitely difficult in the beginning for sure. But then I don't know, I, just during, during trainings and the more games you play, the more experience you get, yeah. the more you understand your position as a goalkeeper, you know, inside your 18 or outside the 18, when to, when it's a defensive, you know, kind of block, when it's, you know, offensive. So it's kind of, you know, it all, it all adds up together. And I think through games and experience, it's kind of helped us a lot. Yeah, you know, I, I think one thing that's uh, it's really important for a lot of goalkeepers is to be exposed to, I mean, you know, we're talking general and right guys here, I'm trying to become up from a youth to a professional player. I think one thing that really sets apart somebody who's just a youth player to a professional is in willing to be open to criticism and willing yeah. to, to change, you know, because a lot, I think an amateur doesn't want to change. This, you know, they're like, this has already worked for me. Why do I need to do, why do I need to change this? And then I, I recognized that really quickly when I tried to go overseas and tried to play. And one of the biggest mistakes I made up front is like, well, I've never done this before. I don't want to do that. And mm -hmm. instead of just trying it and seeing like if it was going to help my game and that stubbornness, you know, that's a child versus an adult, you know? Yeah. 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 Go ahead, Omar. No, I was going to say like when you guys were in the, you know, growing up in the ranks and at what point did you guys realize like, oh, wow, this is something that I, I can actually take into a professional environment. Like from your own development, you started thinking, oh, wow, I'm actually pretty good. Like I, I maybe maybe I, maybe all those dreams and all those things that I had for myself and goals that I had, they're they're more achievable than I thought they were going to be. So you could you could start that one off. To be honest, I don't think there was like a moment that I was like, wait, I can really do this. Like from probably the age of nine, I, I could just I personally could see myself just playing professional just because how much I love the game. 
But, and you were six um, three at nine, so you know there was that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was probably like around like five six around the time, to be honest. Uh, like, yeah, I was. I don't know. I just I've always believed. I always believed in in myself. So yeah. Yeah, I think that's the same thing for me. Same thing what C was saying that, I don't know, ever since I was younger, I was just always believing in myself, you know, the coaches that supported me, my family supported me to, you know, hopefully achieve that goal of becoming professional. And, you know, I'm very fortunate enough because, you know, not many parents or not many coaches, you know, would have, would believe in me or, you know, support me. Or, I don't know, I'm just very, very happy to be, you know, where I am now. So, yeah. Sure. I mean, dude, I mean, look, I, honestly, you know, one of the things that I think is that's really important for a lot of the kids out there to hear is just how thankful, how humble you guys both oh, are yeah. in regards to the opportunities that you guys have been given, but also that it wasn't just just, you know, you were born one day and now now you're, you know, in England, you know, it was like. You guys, Nonsense, like you yeah. were talking about the sacrifices, man, but it was like, you guys were willing, like, dude, Damien, like I watched the training session you did. All right. Kind of, I'm kind of a weird goalkeeping nerd apparently because I'm like talking about like sessions when you were like 14 and stuff. But like, I watched the session you did when you were like 14, dude. And I just saw the dude, you were a worker, dude. Like just, yeah. just man. And you were just like all about like, and if that, that ball, it wasn't a clean stick. You wanted that rep again, dude. Yeah. It wasn't like one of those things where, you know, you were like, you were happy with it, dude. And see, dude, seeing like, Dude, that Dallas Cup was like kind of your coming out party, huh? Well, I guess so. Yeah, that's what a lot of people have been telling me. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, like, I mean, dude, I mean, like, some of those saves in that game, I was like, oh man, this dude, this dude is arriving, man. I mean, it's it's yeah. unreal. Um, I want to talk about some of the mistakes that goalkeepers make when they first enter a pro environment. You know, like if you had to go back. And, I, and I'm not just talking about you two right here, but like a, a mistake maybe that I made or Omar, a ma mistake maybe you made when you first went to a pro environment that you would tell kids, you know, hey, you should not do this. Maybe you should do this instead, you know? Um, so the first time I actually got in, like involved with the White Cups first team, so, um, I remember going in and I didn't have, I don't think I had the right mentality. Well, I know I didn't have the right mentality. It was... um. I tried not to try just to fit in and just to be comfortable and not like stand out at all. I was just trying not to look bad and hide the fact that if I do anything wrong, so I just tried to hide in the group, which isn't the right mentality to have, you know, luckily I got a second chance at it because they brought me in again. And with Leicester, I got a second chance as well to, cause I got to go in with another first team environment to get a new first impression so luckily i had that experience that i knew what not to do the next time yeah now omar you you had a question in regards to i'm sorry you were saying something in regards to um uh whatchamacallit uh god i can't believe i just forgot this we're very professional here <laughs> no we'll go with damien i think he so from his first experience in a pro environment oh yeah that's right we never did that <laughs> for me oh when was how old was i i think 15 yeah, 15, 16, when I first trained with the first team back in the fire. Yeah, it was an experience training with, like, Schweinsteiger and Maya Nikolic. You're just like, whoa, you know, it was it was crazy. I think the one thing I took training with the first team was just understanding, like, listen, this is like a job now. It's You come in at 7, 8, and then you're out 1, 2, and that's your day. And I was just kind of that professional environment, that first first time training with, players like Schweinsteiger and Nikolic kind of just opened my eyes and said, hey, maybe one day I could be, you know, be like them and kind of opened my eyes a lot. Or also, you know, training with Richard Sanchez and Stephen Cleveland helped me a lot. I was very, very, you know, I was very fortunate enough to, you know, have kind of them help me in those sessions I was with them. So I was very thankful for them. But I think the first session I had with Fire was kind of just a session where I wanted to stand out. I wanted to prove myself. Yeah, I'm 15, but I could be competing with, you know, first team players or, you know, the goalkeepers there. And that's, I think that's what I did the first session I had. So I was very pleased. I, I want to bring this up right now because Hector Castro just asked this question. And this is something that we guest asked all the time. And since you guys are kind of, you know, at a high level right now as, as youth going into the professional ranks, a lot of kids are starting to be goalkeepers at eight, seven years old, and then they're just specializing in at that time. 
Now I know, obviously, you know, you guys also, you know, played different sports and stuff growing up too. When did you guys specialize as goalkeepers when, or did you guys play on the field pretty much most through most of your development? Um, I think my first game as a goalkeeper was eight and then I got scouted at nine for Chelsea. So it was like everything before that, I was just playing out and just playing for fun. So it wasn't until like then I actually became like a complete goalkeeper. I was still playing left back for my school team at that time. But um, it was around that time I started to be, yeah, I'm a goalkeeper. Yeah, I think for me, it was probably around like when I was seven, eight years old, I was just playing center, center half. So I was kind of, you know, just enjoying soccer. And I think once I hit nine time, that's when I really started specializing more in, you know, being a goalkeeper and just the working on the fundamentals and all the aspects of uh, goalkeeping. So, yeah. Yeah. Mike, um, so I, just, just one thing I want to talk about from the last question. Sure. Um, and I'm sure these guys can attest to this too, but it's like, I think even when I stepped into like the first pro environment, like the first pro combine and things that I was in, uh, it was just really difficult to, to like, you wanted to obviously bring your own flair and who you were, but at the same time too, you sometimes oh, were over trying to overcompensate. And, you know, if the coach wanted something from you, you were, I was personally trying to do too much of it, like yeah. trying to force, you know, trying to force passes, trying to be, um, more vocal when like I am a vocal person but not how I was I kind of changed my, my personality completely to try and form what I thought the coaches wanted to see from me um, and I'm sure again I'm gonna say this and I'm sure you guys can attest this as well is just like there's a reason in any in any in any, in any environment that you step into that you're there the coaches either want you uh, you know somebody on staff saw you play and they recommended you they referred you and you're there for a reason so if, to any to any kids out there who are, you know end up stepping into a combine or you know somewhere where they're already kind of being recommended, I would just say stick to who you are, stick to your personality, and then obviously take an information after. Don't try and uh, step in and try and you know fit a certain mold that you may not fit because you're going to be upset at the end of the day if you get rejected because you were you know you were being something you're not. Dude, I remember from my, myself personally, like whenever I went to my went to my first trial, is I tried to catch every cross possible because I thought because I was small that if I came out for everything that I would prove that I could handle crosses. Well, as we all know, that's not reading the game. Sometimes <laughs> yeah. you're not supposed to come out for that cross. So some crazy five, eight dude is just running at the ball and they're like, ah, dude, that's lifting right over you. Like, what are you doing? And, yeah. uh, yeah. and so, and so dude, Omar, you're absolutely correct about that. I mean, you shared a really good story in regards to, to DA showcase when, uh, when you were with galaxy in regards yeah. to, when you noticed, and that I think that's a that's a really tough thing. And I want to ask C and Damien about this. Is it more difficult for you guys? Like you guys were the seventeens. You know, you're on world stage. Is it more difficult when you have those eyes on you than than when you know there's not that pressure? You don't know those not, not those scouts looking at you guys. See, I mean, you could start. You could say you could start. Oh, I go. All right. Um, I don't know. I've felt personally like, um when the eyes are on you i guess in some will say it's it can be harder but i don't know i feel like it's easier to because you know the people are watching you like what's actually more difficult is when people aren't watching you trying to keep those standards and keep doing like the stuff that you, that got you there when people aren't watching that's what i always thought was the difference between a good and a great goalkeeper you know yeah. yeah 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 no that was spot on see I mean for me personally I think there was really not much pressure when I was playing with like I like when there's you know like at Nike friendlies and um the World Cup and you know different tournaments when a lot of like there's when there was a lot of scouts and eyes on me I just try to like you know just play the way I play like you guys were saying and just trying to not overdo it but just stick to you know your instincts and you know, your technique and all that and just believe in yourself and just try to just keep a cool head and a calm head. That's pretty much it. Mike, uh, just see, yeah, I follow up with those questions, guys. I think one thing that I've recently been talking to uh, some coaches about is when when they do their scouting process, do they scout winners or are they trying to create a curriculum and, and, and environment and culture within their group to develop those winners? Um, and it seems like, again, we've asked those questions twice now of like, do you guys – perform better when the pressure is on or do you guys you know perform better when there's no pressure and it sounds like you guys are again of that mental 
uh, attitude of, of no, I'm no matter what environment I'm in, I'm trying to win. So do you guys feel like you guys have that winning mentality? And um, is there like something from your past, a coach that you had or, you know, an experience that you had that kind of made you realize you needed to have that winner's mentality uh, to make it to the next level? You want to go? Yeah, I mean, for me, it was just everything always was competitive, even if just playing, you know, basketball or, you know, FIFA. I always want to win. That's kind of my mentality. So uh, ever since I was younger and I was training with, you know, Igor and Marek, um, they kind of just put that mentality in me that, you know, or every save, you have to always make that save. You can't give up for it, you know, just kind of creating good habits when you're younger and just kind of having that winning mentality and, yeah, pretty much. See, can you add on to that? Yeah, you know, mine was similar. Like, um, I think it's more from my older siblings, like just competing with my siblings all the time. Just having a, comp like, I was just raised to be competitive. So like a competitive nature from there, just like not just in sport, just everywhere that when it gets to the game, it's the same thing. Like you always want to win. No one wants to do something and lose. Like, what's the point? You know, if you're going to do it, you're going to do it right. You know? yeah, absolutely. yeah you know um one thing that you, it was really cool that you guys were bringing up in regards to um the uh the winning mentality and also talking about you know your experiences you know um as younger players and stuff like that is that 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 whole kind of uh the mentorship right you were talking about the goalkeeper coaches that you worked with the mentorship yeah. up there um omar and i we'd re recently um been talking about this and i forgot which coach it was that we were talking about the, the mentoring of the younger younger goalkeepers did that come from from somebody that you know omar or was that from the conversation with matt like wh where'd that come from but uh you know you know what i'm talking about yeah yeah no no i think it's uh yeah, yeah i think it's, we were talking about the social side of things and, the social side of things yeah, exactly tries, and the younger yeah. goalkeepers at the academy um because there is that culture of a club like you talk about a fulham or a leicester city huge history right and no disrespect to white caps or you know chicago fire or anything like that but like these kids have grown up you know watching the first team their entire lives and, and, and the, the generations and generations and generations. Right. So do you guys have like, kind of like a mentor program where like, you know, you guys as older goalkeepers in the Academy, you know, help out some of the younger guys or they kind of look up to you or, or you guys come out to their sessions or anything? Uh, yeah, we've actually, um, this during this quarantine, we've been like making videos, showing them stuff they can be doing. Uh, we did a little Q and a with them just about like mentality as well as like nutrition and all of that like they try and get us involved with the younger goalkeepers as much as possible yeah yeah that was the same thing uh here in fulham before quarantine we would you know always train with the younger keepers as well you know sometimes there'd be days where they'd come join us and we train with them but also you know during this quarantine you know just staying just trying to you know all stay together and just you know help out the younger keepers as well and provide you know more information on data and you know nutrition you know just different styles position styles saves kind of just helping them improve their game as well so yeah dude yeah, I, my, I, uh, yeah go ahead omar no to build off that point guys i know you guys have been with the first teams and things like that so like have any of the older goalkeepers uh casper for uc and then damon i'm sure with marcus like have, have any of those guys kind of taken you under their wing at all and um helped you in terms of kind of helping you transition from uh from here in the states to to europe oh yeah yeah, Marcus Badinelli is a class guy, very class guy. He's put me under his wing. I'm very fortunate for that because, you know, there could be keepers that, you know, just pretend like they don't know who you are, you know, not supporting you or not. But I think he sees something in me. He's just supporting me, and I'm very happy that, you know, he put me under his wing and just kind of gave me advice, you know, not only about on the field but also off the field, how to deal with certain things, you know, um, you know, different situations like playing or being on the bench, just, yeah, just different situations. I think Marcus is a very class guy and it's helped me a lot. So, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, similarly, uh, Lester, like the three senior goalkeepers, like the experience that they have is unbelievable. Um, Kasper Schmeichel, Danny Ward, and Elgin Yukupovic. Uh, like when I came in, like straight away, uh, they tried to involve me with the banner. They tried like all sorts of things. Uh, even during training, like if I'm maybe doing something a bit different or maybe that there's something that they can help me out with, they won't be afraid to come and see me 
inside or they'll see me or they'll tell me on the on the pitch there yeah, um, like what I can add to their game as well as I'm learning just from watching them um, even things like in the gym uh, like trying to help me out say yeah let's do a workout together before set before the session or like a little what bike it's it's really good man you guys are uh, you guys are so lucky man because I'm just like thinking back man like you know, I'm, I'm a hundred years old and we just didn't have that kind of like support system here in, in this, in, in the United States. Dude, I mean, for real though, dude, it's like, I mean, I remember only talking about like 15, 20 years ago or whatever, when I was a kid, but like, you know, it was just like, I didn't have anyone to look up to. I didn't have anyone mentoring me under my wing. Like, you know, I didn't have a, you know, I didn't have an Omar pro GK Academy Instagram. I could go to as a kid <laughs> and, 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 and ask questions and DM people and stuff like that, man. So it's like, I think it's really important for all those kids and the older goalkeepers out there who are listening and goalkeeper coaches to hear that say, dude, that means so much to all of us as goalkeepers. And just straight up, I knew before you guys even answered it, that the quote that it, the answer was going to be yes, because that's just what goalkeeper unions about, man. It's just, it's just different. It's just special. It's, it's a little bit different than the, than the field players. And like, you know, and I'm not trying to disrespect that like, I'm going on a rant here, but like, I'm not <laughs> trying to disrespect like the field players or anything like that, but like, man, we all, regardless of whether you're eight years old or you're 48 years old, like, you know, we're all in this together. Right. Was that a big surprise for you guys though? Like, I'm sure again, uh, you hear certain stories about how cruel and how think, you know, how how crazy sometimes, uh, moving into professional environment can be. Was that, was that a surprise to you guys? Well, like going into it, like these are guys that I've watched, like for that I watch on the TV, like I see them, like, I call them by their last name. Like, so <laughs> I wasn't expecting to go there and be on like a first name basis with them or even like them even notice me. I wasn't expecting that. So just that was, it's just huge. It's just like a huge plus. It's a confidence boost in, it, in itself. Yeah. 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 No, I think that's the same thing for me when, when just that first session, just coming in, training with the first team and just seeing, you know, you train with Marcus Benelli, you know, Mark Rodak, just, two class goalkeepers and you're just like wow and you were just seeing them on the telly you know two three years ago when they were playing in the prem and now you're training with them which is crazy it kind of shows how you know hard work you know gets you places and i think it was it was just great kind of you know not only opened my eyes but also gave me a, a boost to keep working even harder by the way my favorite thing is like damien is that you're saying tele and the prem just means that you've been you've been in England for a bit, man. You've been in England for a bit. Yeah, you're gonna have that accent soon, dude. You're gonna sound I, really all eloquent and distinguished, like C here. I, you know. I hope I don't. I hope I don't. But I mean, I've been picking. I've been picking up a bit of stuff, like you know, when I first came back from for the holidays with my my family, I was just talking to everyone, and they're like, "Wait, like what? What happened to you?" They're like, "What's going on?" <laughs> And I was just like, nothing, what's, what's happening? Like, what's happening? And then they're just like, you speak differently. I'm just like, you know, I just, I, I adapted to it, I guess. But that's the same thing with C. The first camp we went to together in Florida, like, you know, him and I were just speaking normally. And all of a sudden we see each other and we're speaking, you know, we have like <laughs> accents and we're just like, whoa, it's like, it's crazy how time, yeah, how time flies. So it's good. It's good though. But hopefully I don't pick up the, the British accent, no offense, but I just, I think, <laughs> I think people are going to get annoyed of me. Uh, you bring but, that Chicago uh, accent to uh, England, dude. Bring that Chicago. Oh, they're giving me a lot of banter for that. <laughs> First, I mean, they still do to this point now, but now it's kind of slowed down a bit. But yeah, it's good because uh, go it's good. No, it's 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 good, though. Uh, but for you guys, I know you guys are pretty close. Like, how, how is your guys' relationship over the years kind of... Uh, gotten better is it you know i'm sure you guys are always competing and uh like we talk about having that winner's mentality but how is your guys' relationship has it been stronger do you guys you know still chat on a regular basis about like your experiences and all that yeah oh yeah no we have we have very good yeah we have very good relationship yeah like probably i've always thought like having a close competition with someone is the best way to like build a relationship with them because like you guys always like putting in work if you put in work with somebody you're gonna build a relationship like um, I've learned so much from him because of course like we're two completely different keepers but like I pick up stuff from him and I guess he he might yeah. have picked up stuff <laughs> from me as well so yeah um That's so true. these are just like even after the game we played we played full and we went away I I held our bus for like a good 20 minutes because I was yeah. just standing there talking to him I wasn't forgot that I had to leave so yeah, yeah, that's awesome. 
You know, it's yeah. funny because like I, I was going to I was going to say, you know, hey, we wanted to have both you guys on and um, you guys both said you were down to do it. And I was like, maybe they'd be down to be on together. I'm like, I hope they're cool with each other. Like, this is going to be <laughs> awkward no. if, they, if they can't stand each other. Um, I think, dude, I, I for real, some of my best friends still to this day are like keepers that I, I, I was on the same team with. And like, you know, I was generally usually the number two or number three or number nine, you know, or whatever, uh, in the, in the goalkeeper death chart, but, uh, but we competed. Um, and I just think it's just cause like nobody else gets it really, unless yeah. they've, they've been through the battle with you, you know? So you're going to have that. You're going to have that. Um, I want to talk about load the load, right? Because you are talking about how you guys get, get to train with the first teams now, which is just baller. Like that's, I mean, dude, I want to be you guys, which is sad and and kind of depressing that that uh as an old man i want to do that um but was the low is the load like was it like oh my gosh wow first team this is this is next level compared to the load that we get at youth uh i mean for me personally like with the training sessions i had with igor like back you know back here in chicago it was it was just a higher intensity that's pretty much it just playing with you know even better keepers you know more experienced keepers so that's probably the only difference for me. But I think another thing is also just the professionalism and like every detail It's just crazy how every detail matters. If the smallest detail matters to, you know, have a better chance of saving the ball. So, yeah. Dude, you sound like you train with me as a U9 for privates. Just every little <laughs> tiny detail. And these kids are like, I don't want to do this anymore. Okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> See? Yeah. Um, the loads, I wouldn't say as it's changed because I trained quite a bit with uh, Vancouver so I had training in the morning before school and then I went to school I trained again afterwards so it's like a similar it's a similar thing but just the whole professional uh, environment everything you're doing is for the football so like it's almost like you're always training even if you're not on the pitch or in the gym you know yeah yeah is Kripo just a beast by the way Oh yeah, like at training. Yeah. I just heard he's just a beast, dude. At training, he just yeah, he, that he guy. Just... He's he's a player. He is a yeah. player. He's a he's a he's a serious keeper. He's a serious keeper. Mm -hmm. That guy throws himself at everything. <laughs> nah, he's he's pretty. He's really athletic, and that's. I mean, talk about yeah. somebody who, in, in my opinion, is one of those ones who like technique is there. I think he has good distribution. He has got you know he's got a little flair there, but it's just about the IQ, the guy has just such a good ability and understanding of his the presence and goal and where he is oh, yeah, to yeah. make a save. Sure. Yeah. Did you train with him a lot? Um, not too much. I trained with him maybe, um, actually maybe like five or six times, but yeah, he's a great guy. He's a really great guy. Uh, I want to talk about this cause, uh, you know, you guys were both talking about, you know, your experiences with MLS Academy in regards to the load wasn't that different when you, because you guys were training with the first team in MLS here to go over to the Academy. Do you guys think that if you hadn't been at an MLS Academy, you wouldn't have been as, pre as well prepared to join a European club, um, you know, than, than you are right now? I mean, really depends on like the training sessions you have because okay. you could be you could be on a non MLS team and you know also play your you know also be prepared for overseas mm -hmm. but it really depends. I mean for us for both C and I was just fortunate that we had really good goalkeeper trainers. You know, back you know for me in the fire and for you know C in Vancouver. So but it doesn't really matter if you're either playing in an MLS team or a non MLS team. It just depends on, you know the workload you have and also, you know, your trainers and the games you play and just all of that kind of, you know, co combines up to, you know, see if you're prepared or not to play overseas. Yeah. 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 Similar for me. It's like, it's more about the environment. Like yeah. if you're around, like if you've got a good coach, you've got a good mindset. And as well, what helped me a lot is that I had a great, like, like a group of goalkeepers that I worked with at, um, at Whitecaps, like he was all sorts of different people and he was all really good goalkeepers that were all like about the hard work. So they all pushed me, I pushed them. And that's like, I give them as much credit as I can, like for the reasons that I'm doing as well as I am. Yeah. yeah. And 
It was good, good. Yes. And you guys, I know you guys have said working with the first team goalkeepers and now you're on like a first, you know, first name basis with these guys and um, they've taken you underneath their wing and all that stuff. But like, what, what about them have you guys learned the most? I know, you know, they've been pros for X amount of years and, you know, have that experience over you. But like, what is something, let's say from a technical standpoint on the field and how, like, did you take, have you take anything from their games? And also too, from just like a personal standpoint off the field, how they carry themselves. Is there something that stands out for you guys in uh, either of those categories? See, do you want me to start off? Yeah, yeah, I mean, for me personally, I think it was more men- mentally. Yeah, it was mostly mentally, but also pos- positionally. It was just crazy how, you know, you think, oh, you know, technique's there. But it's also half a step right or half a step left. And, like, that's the difference between making a save and, you know, conceding a goal. So just stuff like that changes, you know, your perspective on – goalkeeping and just realizing that okay when you're training with the goalkeeper it's like okay maybe you're on the same level as as them but you're like hey maybe you know you still have to keep working and improve you know it's not like you're training with them and you're just there it's just you have to now prove yourself that you're to your, you know not only the goalkeeper coach but the first team coach mm. that you know that you're there and that you want to stay there you know you want to keep training with them daily and you know hopefully be not all not just be a training keeper but you know second or third choice goalkeeper soon so yeah that's that's kind of my my emphasis on training with the first team and yeah yeah for sure um off the pitch firstly like these guys are all hard workers like they know what they want like seen off the first team games you've got Casper like going onto the bike and he's on a walk bike for like hours like sweating like unbelievable and then but like in training like I'm always mesmerized by this while we're training. Like they like they have so much experience that sometimes like I know this doesn't make sense, but it looks like they know where the ball's going before it's been hit. Like it's they just know the game so well and like they can read they can read the ball really well, you know? So like yeah. there's some hits that I'm seeing like, okay, that's going in for sure. And then they're there, like strong hand, and it's like unbelievable to see, you know. Yeah, there was actually a famous clip that came out famous, but like a, cl- a clip that came out recently from your guys' this session, and it was, I think it was in like a crossing session or shot stopping session. There was just some unreal saves being made. I, I have the oh, clip; yeah. it's on my page. But it was just like all these crazy, all these crazy saves being made, and like the the culture and like the environment with all you guys was just like very. I don't know. It just seemed like such a fun place to be. Like you guys all were like cheering, cheering for each other. Uh, the banter was there when you know what I'm talking about. We're normally like our sessions are quite competitive based, so. Um, we normally do junior goalkeepers or senior goalkeepers, and then we might just have a coach cross the ball in. We've got three three um, outfield players versus a goalkeeper, and they just try and score. Everyone gets the one touch, and like it's really competitive, really live, like it's a dynamic drill. And like when you when your teammate makes a save, you're like yes, like you're, and like when you score, like you want to celebrate. But if you celebrate, you know that when it's your turn in goal, it's over for you. So yeah. Like, Hold on, guys. We have a really important question right here from uh, AO from the American Outlaws, and you guys, uh, you guys, you guys know where these guys are going with yeah, this, right? Of course. So they want to know: Do the fans at your academy games in the UK play drums just like the American no. Outlaws do for no. you guys no. at the World no Cup? No like the Outlaws. No. Nope. No one can have the support as good as the American Outlaws. I mean, credit to them. Christ to them, you know, through CONCACAF, through Nike Friendlies, through, you know, through the 15s national team, you know, cycle. All of it. Through the 17s cycle, just crazy support from the the outlaws. And I think some players may take it for granted, but, you know, C and I are just – We love them. C and I, yeah, we appreciate them a lot because they – they're the reason why we play for them, you know, so it's good. Dude, it's it's amazing. Like, you'll watch – sometimes you'll watch the the games on TV – and you're just like, where's all that sound coming from? And then they'll like pan over to the left. It's like, oh, literally, dude, the U.S. has the best fan base when it comes to the youth matches, doesn't it? Like they're exactly. always, they're incredible. Always there. Yeah. They're always. I've never played a home game that he's not there. That yeah. I don't know that they're not there, you know. Um, There's at least at least one representative at every game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ronald. Yeah. Ronald Chin. The, yep. That's the Ronald one Chin. Guy from- that's yeah. the one guy we always remember. Every oh. I, you always you love you you have to love him. If you're if you play for the US, him. you have to love him. Like every I don't know, I just I appreciate him so much because 
like we'll be at a training session in IMG and he's there and we're just like, wow, you know, and he's just yeah. cheering us, cheering us on. And it's just crazy. Even at CONCACAF, you know, we're, we're playing against, you know, Mexico and we're down, you know, one nil. He's still playing the drums, you know, exactly. still supporting us even through bad times, but also good times. He's always been there and, yeah. you know, massive credit to, you know, Ronald and, you know, everyone at American Outlaws because they're the ones that just, you know, push us to keep, you know, working hard and play for them. So, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's got to fuel you guys. That's got to fuel you guys to like, oh, just want to yeah. keep getting better when you're like, man, if I, when I'm part of this type of environment and this type of fan base, you know, like it just makes you want to be just work as hard as possible because it's almost like they're working for you too. And yeah. you're like, if oh, they're going to work, sure. I'm going to work. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, go sorry. ahead, Omar. No, 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 no. I just like from from where you from where you guys were to where you guys are now, like from your first day in Europe, you know, to to now, like what has been your biggest improvement? Do you guys feel? Ooh. Oh, I, 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 go see. You can start. It can be, more, it can be yeah. multiple things. It doesn't have to be one, but just something um, that you kind of realized early and you said, yeah, that's something I got to really work on. Of course, like technically, there's a lot that. Like, I feel like I've improved in almost every aspect, technically, like, as I've been playing here. But it's mainly just, like, reading the game is, like, and just Vital. the way yeah. I go about just goalkeeping in general and, like, becoming more efficient, like, the way I move my body, the way I'm making saves. Like, I feel like that's gotten, like, much better and it's almost made my job easier, you know? Yeah. Yeah. D, D? Uh, I think for me probably you know similar to what C has said but also just mentally you know just trying to overcome you know a bad game or bad training you know and you're going home you're going back home alone and you know for me I don't know how it is for C but for me I live with another house family so you know me just going back home staying in my room for you know four or five hours just trying to think what to do or just trying to you know assess what happened that's at training sessions or games and not only taking the negative things, but also the positive things. And also just yeah. hugely technically, technically, you know, my distributions improved a lot. My positioning's improved a lot. I mean, ever since, you know, um, for me that, that one point I think was against uh, Senegal, the World Cup, you know, that game was kind of a game where now when I, when I watch it, all those goals that, that I conceded were preventable. So I think just, you know, playing those games, experience, having the experience, you know, against Senegal or, you know, against games like Leicester, Chelsea, you know, the big teams, big Premier League teams just kind of give you a lot of, you know, not only a confidence boost, but also just like an assessment on where you are and where other keepers are, you know, from England or from different, you know, European com uh, countries. So, yeah, just overall, just my mental aspects improved a lot my positioning, you know, in the goal, or, you know, out of the goal, reading the game, understanding game and just reading crosses and just everything, you know, every aspect of the game has improved. So I'm very, you know, grateful for that. I think one thing that's really, what's really great that you guys are putting, putting out right here is you're talking about reading the game and you're talking about the reps, you know, at that level and everything like that, because I always explain to people, I say, Dude, if you don't get the reps, you can't get to that speed of play unless you get the reps at that speed of play. Because yeah. you're not going to be able to read the game at that speed of play unless you experience it. And I don't know about you guys, but even right now, while we've been on quarantine, the Zoom sessions, the breakdowns we're doing with your teams, and obviously you guys are doing it with your teams, you probably probably feel like, man, I'm becoming a goal, better goalkeeper right now just because yeah. I'm just learning the game right now during this whole time, right? Yeah. I mean, for me personally... Um, you know, we have a group like a like a GK Union group chat and, you know, we have podcasts as well, the uh, goalie coach. And, you know, we have different sessions or different kind of, you know, assessments where, you know, we have to, you know, each person has a concept to do. So for me, it was um, diving for like diving technique or shot stopping overall and just like the position you have to have when you're shot stopping. But there's also kind of, you know, on huddle, on huddle, you know, we're watching games, we're watching goalkeeper you know saves clips of distribution decision making and just overall just you know overall just kind of improving your game and not only on the field but also off the field and understanding you know oh next time you're in this position 
or this situation you should you know do this or just kind of having understanding different uh situations you know throughout a game that can happen see what about you yeah so like um what i've been trying to do i've been um using like huddle like he's been saying like we've get we get like um uh we get our game tape we've also got like the first team's game tape i try and see the situations that like of course casper's been in and then i'll look at my my video and be like what did i do in his position what did he what did he do that i should have done like what what can i do to do what he's doing you know so like i'm just i'm trying to just we're just using all the resources right now to like because you can always learn just through seeing you know imagery Dude, I, I, your, your, my head just exploded, and I'm straight up like, can I steal that from your goalkeeper coach? Because that's awesome. Like p- yeah. putting the, the two tapes side to side and recognizing the, the the similarities and the differences and the positives and the negatives from both. Dude, that's that's awesome, man. Whoever uh, whoever your keeper coach is there, um, I'm gonna steal that from him, and then he's gonna sue me. Um, well, how yeah, how are you guys? How are you guys as goalkeeper coaches? Like how we you know when you guys again stepped into those roles or. Uh, stepped into the uh, first team environments. How have they been with you guys? What has their approach been like? So at Leicester, like what I've loved is how the goalkeeper sessions are really live. Like most of the work you'll do is almost a straight replica of a real game. Like they'll try as like to mimic situations in a game. So it won't just be a static cross. Like you might have to take a touch down the line and then cross it so that you're actually moving before you're doing everything. You're not just, because in a game, you're not just standing still and then a shot comes, you know? So like, um, I, yeah, I'm really, I'm really liking how the goalkeepers are done. Yeah, I think for me, everything's more, you know, game realistic, you know? It's just, just being ready for every, every shot pretty much, you know? Like she's saying, ball's rolling, you know, for a cross and just always expecting something to happen. I mean, you think you're grabbing, you know, when you're training with the first team, you know, sometimes you're grabbing like, like you know, just a little spray of water and all of a sudden, like, you have to be, expect the shot, you know. It's mm-hmm. crazy just being, just always being on your toes and just always being prepared for a shot. Just kind of making that game realistic, you know, that those good habits, you know, preparing yourself for the game. So, yeah, that's what I think. Oh, yeah, there was one more thing. Um, what I actually appreciate the most is that they we all have they see us with all different uh, identities as keepers. Like, of yeah. course, we're all goalkeepers, but we're all different still. Like, each goalkeeper is different, and they know that. So they might tell one goalkeeper one thing, and then tell another goalkeeper for the same situation a completely different thing because we're different keepers. And I respect mm. that so much. Dude, that's huge. I'm glad they brought they bring that up because. So many goalkeeper coaches out there, and I'm sure you guys have seen this, you know, and you don't have to, you know, call anybody out on blast or anything like that. But like, they try to train you, they try to train Damien and, and, and see the same. And you're like, yo, <laughs> like, you can't yeah. do that. Like, our starting positions are going to be completely different based on our attributes. Yeah. yeah, that's very true. I mean, it's also, you know, during our time, you know, with the 17s and after team thing, Mike McGinty's done a, like, you know, a really good job for both C and I because, yeah. you know, like she said previously, you know, if I was in a similar situation, C would be, he would give me a completely different, you know, scenario or, you know, information than he would give C because not only, you know, of his height, but also just everything in general. Yeah. No, for sure. Um, We got a question that came in right here uh, on the comment board from a, a guy named Rob Suller. And uh, this is actually a great question. He goes, for both you guys, when you started training with the first team, do you remember the moment that made you say, you know what? I, I, I belong here. Is there a specific moment that came out to either one of you guys? Oh, I mean, I don't I mean, want you guys to get a big head or anything like that, but you know, like a moment where you're like, you know what? I'm not, I'm not a disaster. You know? Yeah. I mean, I think for me, it was just pretty much, you know, when we're having those small side of game with the first team, you know, and just everything like there's, you know, those sessions where, you know, you just save everything, you know, sometimes you just don't even know how you save it. Like just unexpectedly. Yeah. You're just like in the zone. I think, you know, just after training, you know, shaking the, you know, the gaffer sander, you know, all the cat, all the coaches and just kind of, you know, earning their respect, I guess, for, you know, what we've done. I think that's what kind of, you know, it's what kind of gave me that kind of boost. I think that one session where, you know, I played, you know, we were playing, you know, 5v5 and I was just saving everything. I was in the zone and just, you know, 
being vocal, just kind of being that crazy, you know, maniac that, you know, having a good presence, you know, during, you know, during training and after, you know, seeing not only the coaches, but also the players just kind of, you know, respecting you. And just for me, um, an example would be um, Harrison Reed or Bo uh, Decor uh, Bobby Reed, just them, or Tom Carney just saying my name. I'm just like, whoa, they know my name. Like it, it was, I was starstruck, you know? And that, I think for me, that's kind of the moment where I was just like, whoa, like maybe, maybe I should be here. Maybe I should be training here daily, you know? And just kind of giving me that boost and motivation to, you know, keep working hard and just trying to stay, you know, consistent, you know, trainings and, you know, just trying not only stay uh, consistent and efficient, but also just, you know, trying to improve every day. So that's what that's because that's like a sign of respect, right? Like when they yeah, actually yeah. know your name, you're like, oh, like they 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 show value in me. I'm not yeah. num number, you know, whatever your number is on exactly. your back right now, you know, or Chicago or whatever they're calling you. you yeah. know? So. <laughs> they can easily just because yeah. players do it all the time. They can easily just say, hey, keep uh, give me the ball. Like yeah. they just call you keep like they just call you keeper or something, and like yeah. when they start calling you by your name, that's like you feel like a sort of risk, like that they're showing you a bit like more respect, validation, you know? yeah, and yeah, a bit of validation, you know. And as a young goal, as a young player, when you move into a first team environment, if you do well, like they'll let you know you're doing well. Everyone will scream, everyone will be like joking around for you. Like it's it's a good environment. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I uh, I, I think uh, we need to have Omar answer this question as well too, dude. Because I want to know from him, uh, from his experiences. When was the kind of the first moment that you knew that you belonged to the Galaxy? Um, and I think probably after like my first like two or three games, just like the streaming of games, because you know our coach was very uh, strict, had a lot of played a lot of mental games with us. So in training, you just never knew if you were meeting his standard. And I think after probably my second or third game, I had, you know, good performances. I realized I was like, okay, there's a reason why they scouted me. There's a reason why I'm here. And the way he approached the uh, in-game performances was a lot different than uh, in training. He was just very strict in training, made sure that everything was held. And if it wasn't held, at least influence it. And in games, I would come at like halftime and apologize. Like, hey, I probably should have caught that cross. And he'd be like, Omar, look, I teach you all these things and I want you to do it perfectly in training. But as long as you get the job done on the field, that's all I care about. So that kind of shifted my perspective of like, oh, wow, there's like I can just add all these different tools to get the job done. Perfect. So that kind of changed my perspective, too, about my competition and who I saw as my teammates of like, I can actually learn something from you. Like, I know we're competing for the same job, but like I, you can teach me something about how you, you know, have a higher set position on a cross. And maybe I can try to adopt that. And I started, you know, picking up all these little cues. And I feel like that's what really helped me um, as a coach now, like understand, like you guys said, that there aren't two players the same you can't coach them the same you have to be very open-minded and throw some tools at them here and there suggestions here and there and collaborate with them and see what's the most optimal i guess technique or tactical uh, decision for for every situation yeah i mean for me it was when i shut down jurgen klinsman i mean he was like 50 something years old but still <laughs> uh i shut him i shut him down guys he was a guest player and uh and i shut FIFA him down classics I or what? <laughs> Yeah, it was, dude, it was a, it was a rec league and, uh, it was, uh, you know, you were only allowed, you know, um, three touches. Uh, no, actually it was a, uh, galaxy reserve match and he decided just to, to hop, dude, the guy could still hit a ball. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dude, like, for, seriously, because like he looks like he, he looks like he's like, you know, I'm the frail German. I can't do a German accent. It's terrible. But uh, <laughs> and then obviously he just hammers this ball and I'm like, oh, that is a former big time player right there. So that was a. <laughs> That was a crazy moment for me. Um, all right, guys. Well, uh, we're, we, we've been going for over an hour, and I, I want to appreciate you guys, uh, you know, your time, man. I mean, honestly, this is, uh, this is great for us that uh, we were able to get you. Uh, it was unfortunate that um, – oh, Saskia wants to hop in. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Yeah, hop in. Uh, hold on. Let's see if she yeah, can we hop could... <laughs> Yeah. See, you, you want to go in? See, you still have – Yeah, you still got some time? You got oh, some yeah, time? Because I know Not she's – Dude, I don't I know if you guys know – I don't know if you guys know former 99 World Cup winner Saskia Weber, but she's opinionated. Uh, okay. Um, wait, did she just send a... Do you guys have any idea of when you guys will be back or there's not really much updates? No, no idea. No. <laughs> We what just had a one-way flight ticket back home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What have you guys been up to, though? Return. 
See, I saw your video the other day, or like I think it was yesterday, where you slammed that ball into that little pole and it flew over to the neighbor's house. See, I have no clue how I did that, but <laughs> I guess I did. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was just trying to. I have no, I have the smallest backyard too. I don't know what what I was trying to do, but like, <laughs> I haven't kicked the ball far yet. So I just tried to hit a um, side volley into a wall, and then it must have bounced back. <laughs> <laughs> and your face afterwards, so I was like. Nope. Yeah, that, that's that's gone. That's yeah. things with the neighbors. Luckily, uh, my neighbors guys, are nice. That's good. Yeah. Have you guys been going to the gym and stuff? I'm sure you guys have like gym routines or like packets that you guys are having to, yeah. to kind of follow. Yeah. Not only with the club, but also like for me, I have a personal trainer I've been working with for like several years now. So, you know, he's just kind of helping me out and I've been doing my workouts in the garage and in my room. So it's good. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough, man. So I, I'm sure you guys have obviously felt like the, the physical, like how necessary that is in terms of your diet, in terms of like your physique. Oh, yeah. Yeah, huh? yeah, it's it's vital. I mean, even during now, it's kind of, I mean, for me, it's kind of like that, um, you know, preseason kind of, uh, that's how I think of it right now as a preseason yeah. kind of reassessing, you know, my seat. I mean, because for me, I think, you know, the season's done. So I'm just reassessing, you know, the games I've played and just trying to, you know, see what I can improve not only physically but also mentally so I've been doing you know I've been meditating I've been reading a lot of books you know I've been trying to just you know watch you know goalkeepers I idolize like you know Ter Stegen, Jan Oblak so I've been you know I've been I've been just trying to improve you know daily and just trying to learn something new every day so that's my kind of my goal so far for this you know this quarantine absolutely see yeah. you too I'm guessing yeah, of course. Like everyone's got their um, all their things that they're doing. You got the workouts, the meditation, and the looking back at video clips, all of that. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, well, I mean, you can talk about Jan Black and Ter Stegen, but for you, see who's like, who's a? Uh, I'm sure you probably watch a lot of like Van der Sar clips and like yeah. all the old school guys who maybe have the same kind of like stature as you. Van der Sar is my guy. Like that's yeah. I've been watching him since I was a kid. Like, yeah, I remember his penalty saves versus Chelsea. Those were those were crazy. <laughs> were you there? Were you there at the club? No, no probably no. I, well, no, no, no. I wasn't. I wasn't there around then. I was watching that on TV. Yeah, yeah. but no. But were you at, with the club though? Like you said, U nine to U twelve. Um, no, I wouldn't have been. I wouldn't have been at Chelsea actually. Oh, no, I don't. It was I don't like think so. Two thousand and twelve or something. I don't remember the years. I don't. I don't know if I would have been at the club. Damn. Yeah, yeah man, that sure. that dude to me is is just like such yeah. a pioneer in, in terms of like different just I mean the way he did it, it was just like he wasn't somebody who was yelling like Schmeichel. He wasn't somebody who was gonna, you know, scream at anybody, but he was just so calculated. I just exactly. felt like exactly. you know what I mean? Like and he was thirty six when he joined Man U or yeah, when he joined United and, and he was at yeah. uh, at Fulham too. So I'm sure he has yeah. a big uh probably has a poster at uh, <laughs> at uh, at Fulham and inside, you know, Craven Cottage and all there. Yeah, no, he's he's been there's been a lot of you guys still there. Goalkeepers. Is everybody still there? Yeah, dude, I don't know what happened there. Uh, I lost, we lost all our power here. Um, we lost all our power here, which is insane. Um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we should probably we should probably wrap that up. That's dude. This is gonna be whoever's watching this live stream is probably just got for 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 you guys to know. See, see, and Damien. Um, we had a similar situation happen last week with, uh, with Casey Murphy from, uh, from, uh, OL rain. Like she, she was on and, uh, I lost my connection. So I went scrambling into my dad's, uh, bedroom to try to get connection again. And then like a baby and like my dad, like came through the door. Like it was, it was insane. It was, uh, <laughs> it was quite the experience. Um, all right, guys. Uh, well, yeah, I guess, I guess we'll start wrapping up. Um, Damien C, uh, First off, thanks for joining us, guys. If anybody out yeah, there, if there's pleasure. any kids out there, no, thank you very much for having us, dude. For sure. Like, if, if there's any kids out there that wanna, you know, that that wanna, you know, get some advice or whatever, maybe they're going into their first professional environment. I know both of you guys are pretty active on social media. Like, where's the best place for both of you, for uh, for people to reach out to you guys? Instagram, um, yeah, yeah, Instagram, Instagram. yeah, Instagram. Instagram or it's my Twitter handle, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's the same one. And what, what, what are, the, are these are just your guys' names or anything special? Yeah. Just, yeah, just my big baller keeper yeah. one or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, Nothing, uh, 
Nothing like that. All right. No. Um, and Omar, just uh, is there anything you want to plug before uh, before we get going? Uh, nothing. No, not really. Just uh, keep telling everybody to you know stay safe and like these guys are talking about when you stepped off uh, stepped off Mike. Is that like you know Damien's doing yoga and like you know just do different things where you can end up getting better and, and understanding your, your body a little bit more, your mind a little bit more, you know, studying the game a lot more, finding a goalkeeper that maybe resembles your, your style and maybe watching them and seeing if you can take little things off of them. So don't take it as a time to just relax, but keep on, keep on improving. Yeah. yeah. And remember guys, if you got a, a guest, guest suggestion or a topic suggestion, just reach out to contact at inside the 18. That's the number 18 media.com or reach out to at goalkeeper podcast on all social media platforms. All right, guys, that's all the time on Inside the 18 before my power goes out once more, and we're out. Later, guys. Thank you very much. Oh, right. dude, Thank thanks. You. you guys, thanks uh, Thanks for doing this, man.